so for today's lesson, all you're going to need is a pen and piece of paper, which we don't have. Do we have one there? Great. And remember the only rules of biz kids are there's no such thing as a silly bad idea and put your hands up to unmute yourself. First of all, let me just do a straw poll. Which one of you have ever made any money by yourselves? Hands up. Bonnie, Annie, uh, Mila, Sophie, Noah. Oh, most of, lots of you have. That's fantastic. Great. And who wants to earn money or would like to earn more money over the summer holidays for themselves? Everybody's hands are up. Great. So the summer holidays is the perfect time to do a business because... You've got some time and sometimes people get quite bored in the summer holidays, although I know lots of you have lots of holidays planned. So we're going to be talking about summer holiday businesses, three models. And at the end, I'm going to get you to choose one and make a little plan as to how to do it and what plans you're okay. going to do over the summer. So our first business model for the summer is the clay bead bracelet business. Now, who's already made salt clay bead bracelets or sold clay bead bracelets? Great, lots of you have made and sold clay bead braces. This is our first model, hey Adessa, and we're gonna change it. We're gonna talk about it and how to do it as well as we possibly can. So all you need, very simple for the clay bead bracelet business, you need one of these off Amazon, a bead spinner if you want, and ideally a friend to be a partner with, just because, what's it like if you do it? Oh, Mila G, have you done it by yourself or did you do it with a friend? I did it with a friend. Okay, so no one's done it by themselves, but you need a friend, don't you? Did you? Why do you? We think you need a friend. You get more bracelets out of it, and also it's more fun. Yeah, it's more fun. Otherwise, you'd be feeling quite under pressure if you were by yourself. So this is how this business model works. You need to spend around thirty pounds on or less, but that would be the max on clay beads and something to display your bracelets on. You then make any designs you want. And then you set up a stall in a park or in front of your house or at school. Where else have we done one? In front of the pub. That's in front of the pub. Who else has got a location they've done a clay bead bracelet stall at? Who's got Toby? What have you? What locations can you think of? You could do it outside, like a busy place, maybe like a town centre or something. Exactly, a town centre. And actually, we should come on to rules and restrictions around that, but that would be a great place to do it, a really busy shopping street. Now, our first tip is to get a card reader from Sum Up. We worked out what difference did having a card reader make to us? We, with cash, we only made around £26, but then in total, we made £124. So then... yeah. More than 100 was on card reader. Exactly. So on Annie's last bracelet business, we would have had £26 without the card reader. We had £126 with the card reader. Noah? Uh, I have a card reader. Oh, very smart. Where's yours? Go and grab it. You it's said a... you took it down. Oh, no, it's in I your... You did take it down. No, it's in your room on the... You, you took it down. No, oh, did I? Where is it? Anyway, they are absolutely brilliant. Noah, how come you've got a card reader already? I did this. It was like this re refill with my dad and we got more money from the card reader, so we used it. Yeah, they're honestly absolutely brilliant. And so many people don't have cash anymore. They don't carry cash around. The next thing to do is to put up a sign. If you want, you could say it's a biz kid. You're a biz kid, but we have a sign saying handmade bracelets please support our small business because adults will then feel really positive because they love helping children so having a sign is super super important as well now who's done a clay bead stool and it hasn't gone very well has anyone had that experience mila s tell us what happened and um, one of the clay beads broke yeah, that can happen, can't it? When the clay beads broke. Who else has had an experience where it what happened with us? It just was it was just a cold, rainy day and we just didn't get enough customers. Yeah, it was it was freezing, wasn't it? Here's Annie's card reader, which is the sum up card reader. And who else has had an experience where things didn't go well? Because some people have told us on TikTok as well they've taken beads out and then it hasn't gone well. Who else has had that experience? Jessica, are you typing in the chat? Okay, let me check the chat. Oh, Jessica, oh my goodness, I need to get that sorted. So the main thing is to keep smiling and remember that all of these things have good days and bad days in such a thing like a clay bead business. Now look at this, I wanna play this video for you, which is some kids. 
which you might have seen on our TikTok, and hopefully you can hear the sound. If I press, and that these kids took out a KB business in the December and had some great tips. Can you hear the sound? We're getting a lot of people coming. One customer comes. Did you hear the sound then, guys? Yeah. Yeah, great. Okay, so let's listen to these nine tips because these are really useful tips. Beginning, a lot of people coming. One customer comes, they start coming more. Which was your most popular design? Mostly the pink ones, all of their, those sold out. And also these orange. All the profits we made today, we're going to buy more resources so that we can make it more efficient. We also have these bags with our business. Logo. I just designed that. And then I made these cards like, thank you for supporting our small business. How yeah. do you feel about making 70? Yeah. I'm relieved. And also like quite proud because this is like homemade stuff. We spent a lot of time into it. I'm glad people wanted to buy. We don't know too much about like businesses, but even so we've managed to do it. I think as we learn more about businesses, we'll be able to make that fast. We just stood out here and no one was taking anything. But after our first order, like we were so happy and proud and it's just nice to see our hard work pay off. So there's always, oh, oops, wait, where, wait. Hi, it's Annie. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> so it's always in the beginning when you're very first out you have to wait a bit for people to come and that always feels a little bit awkward but then they see people coming and they do come so these are our top tips you have to be in a busy place if you've got a clay bead business or any business okay where you're selling off a stall it's got to be busy ideally there'll be more people out and about on a sunny day so you want it to be sunny and warm a card reader is essential because nobody has cash anymore. Nobody carry or few people carry cash. Remember, it's always awkward in the beginning. You're always thinking, oh, my goodness, is this going to work? Is anybody going to come? And finally, always smile and be friendly. And this model, the clay bead business model, doesn't have to be clay beads. It can work with slime, art, crochet or anything you guys can make that is not food. Who else who has a talent for making something? like jewellery or, and what is it that you can make? Odessa, what do you make? Just unmute yourself, Odessa. Origami. Origami, that would be perfect. And that's very unusual. Are you good at origami, Odessa? A little bit. I bet that means you're really good. Is that one there you're making? Is that a bracelet you're making? Yeah. A bracelet, okay. Origami's one, great answer. Annabelle, what else can you make? I can crochet. This is a bee I'm yeah. making right now. Look at that. That's incredible. What was that? A crochet bumblebee? Yeah, it's not going too well. I added blush and it ruined it. <laughs> and it looks really cool. That's lovely, isn't it? You could sell that for more than you could sell a clay brace, a, ba a bead bracelet for. Bonnie, what can you make? Candles. What's that? Candles. Candles. Great. That's another one that's brilliant for a stool. That will definitely work. Stella and Valentina? What can you um, make? Cakes. Cakes. We're coming on to cakes in a minute. That's another one that's really good. Jessica, are you typing in the chat? What can you make? Where is the chat? Oh, Jessica can make scarves. Exactly. So all of you have thought of different things that you can make and you can sell. And the key is to make sure it looks good, not have the prices too high, and something that people will think, oh, yeah, why not? I really just want one of those. Okay, the next summer holiday business, and Stelz, this comes on to you, is, and your idea, is the lemonade stand business, which is a really famous business model for kids. Is that kids? Has anyone ever done a lemonade stand? Jessica has. Oh, some of you have, actually. And Noah, what's your, have you done a lemonade stand? What happened? People just ignored it. <laughs> what? Noah, when was this? Where was it? it? Was, I don't remember. <laughs> Were you very little? Yeah. What was it recent? I don't think so. Okay, so you're not you're saying it didn't go well. No, it didn't really. Okay, that's that well, it's not everything always goes well. Annabelle, have you done a lemonade stand? Yeah, I did it, but we didn't get to keep the profits, unfortunately. We made all the cakes and stuff. And when I was in the hospital, all the staff came down and they bought it all. But then we didn't get to keep the profits because it went to something else. Oh, that's fair enough. Sometimes these things can be fundraisers. And you were saying with your bracelets, you wanted to give some of the money to charity as well. Yeah. So at least you've got the experience of doing it, Annabelle. Adassa, what's, have you done a lemonade stand? 
yeah, it was when I was um, really little, so people was buying lots because it was me and my cousin. Exactly. People love kids doing lemonade stands. And that's because there's a long history to this type of story. And this is why it's a good thing to do, because everybody knows what it is and everybody gets excited. So lemonade stands have been done all over America and all around the world for 100 years by kids. And the reason is because they're simple, they're easy. It's easy for you guys to make lemonade and buyers who will normally be just people walking around the street are super happy to see you and know exactly what it is you're doing. So they have to be done in hot weather and it's brilliant in hot weather. That is another key to success. And however, you've got to be careful with lemonade stands in terms of, and to some extent with KB bracelet stands in terms of permission, but with lemonade stands, it's more difficult because it's food and drink. But even in areas where local councils won't let anyone set up a lemonade stand, they will let a child set up a lemonade stand because they know it's important to encourage children and young teens to do entrepreneurship. Top tips for lemonade stands or cake stores, we'll come on to those in a minute. Again, it's got to be busy near a park, near a beach where people are walking around and going to be getting thirsty. You need to put it where you think thirsty people are. Again, sell on a sunny day and a weekend that there's more people walking and more people are likely to be thirsty and finding thirsty people is the key to this. Styles, what's your question? No, I was going to say that maybe if it's, if there's like a race going on, you could, that would be a good place to do it. That would be a great place to do it. Out, or a festival in Brighton, Stella, outside the park when there's a big festival on, you'll, you'd probably make a lot of money there. Annabelle? I was going to say car boot sales because people walk around and then they get a bit tired and they go to get a drink because they've got like exactly. drink bottles and that would also be a good idea for like making bracelets and crochet and stuff because there's lots of people walking around and there's a lot of views. And that's true Annabelle and they tend to be very busy car boot sales so yeah great I saw oh. I went a few weekends ago and I saw some people who did clay beads there. Oh did you? Yeah Were there they... was lots of there was little kids on the side and I was like oh look they're doing bracelets. Oh, that's so cool. That's brilliant. If anyone sees kids doing KB bracelets, make a video and send it to me. Okay, so you're going to need for lemonades, all you need really is lemon sugar, water, ice, cups, napkins. This is all stuff that you will have around your house and signs. And then in terms of pricing, generally you can sell lemonade for one to two pounds per cup. And a cup can be like a little plastic cup like this, a polystyrene cup. So you do have to sell quite a lot of lemonade to make money. We, you've got to make your lemonade the night before or in the morning and make sure it's cold and set up early. And you've got to have a sign saying whether you say Biz Kids Lemonade Stand or your own name like Stella's Lemonade Stand, you need to have a sign so people know what it is. And we've got some ideas to put balloons, put a sign saying freshly squeezed lemonade and lots of bright colours so people know what you're doing. And... Again, with the colored bracelets, have variations like you would on the bracelets. So this same business model can also work with cakes and sweets. Who can see themselves? Who remembers Jemima when she came on and told us about her first business was a cake business? Yeah. So who can see themselves making or buying lemonade or sweets or cakes? You can. Oh, you all can. can you, you can do that. Lemonade buying. No, sorry, make selling, not just buying, selling. Who can see themselves selling lemonade? So Stella and Valentina, you've got to think which of these business models is your preferred one. Sophie, clay beads, Betsy. So you've got to think which one do you prefer to do, clay beads or lemonade stand or cake stand? Okay, now we're going to come on to our last business model and then you're going to make a plan for your own business. So this is the pre-loved business. Who knows what pre-loved means? Who knows what pre-loved means? Um, Annabelle? Like vintage, selling things that you've used before. I do it myself. I go to shops, I get things for cheap, and then I sell it online because it's if you get the good brands. Right, Annabelle, you can tell everybody how to do this when we get to that section. That's exactly it. Who buys, who already sells stuff, pre-loved stuff online or in a store? Annabelle does. Betsy does. Who buys? Valentina does. Who buys secondhand things or pre-loved things? 
Why do we like it when we find something that we've already, that's pre-loved and we get what, and, and we find it for ourselves? Why do people love to find pre-loved things? Stella, why do they love that? Because mm. it tends to be cheaper and you can help someone else with getting rid of something. Exactly. That's exactly it. Annie, were you going to say anything else? I was going to just say because it's less, it could, because it's less cheap. Who's got a really good bargain buying something secondhand? And what was that bargain? Annabelle, what did you get? I got a jelly cat that was supposed to be about £90. Yeah. And brand new, but I got it for about, I think, £8 or something. So I, I quite enjoyed that bargain. Uh, that's it. Everybody absolutely loves that. Jessica, I'm just looking in your chat. So you're doing a dolls business as well. Okay, Keith, I've got the chat up so I can see when you're talking. Who else has bought a bargain online, secondhand or in a charity shop? I think what the biggest, you've got bargains from charity shops, haven't you? Betsy, what have you got? What's been the biggest bargain you've bought? I got a Ralph Lauren jumper, which is meant to be quite expensive, but I got it for quite cheap off of Vinted. That's fantastic. Someone on TikTok is saying they bought a Wii as in that's a Nintendo, isn't it? For £15, that's a bargain. Noah, what did you buy? What did you get? What bargain did you get? I went to a charity shop and I got these really nice brown, they were a bit like tracksuit, but also not. And and before it was like £20 and then it went down to 10 That's great. Another bargain. Stella and Valentina, best bargain you ever got? My mum, we went to the charity shop and you know how she's going to Ascot? Yeah. She got a fascinator for £14 that she saw on Accessorise for £60. Really? Your mum is the your mum is a queen of getting bargains, pre-loved bargains, Stella. She knows exactly how to do it. And that's yeah. a great result. Jessica's saying she got a doll's onesie from a car boot sale for 1p. I think that's the record of the cheapest bargain got there, Jessica. That's amazing. Toby, what bargain have you got? I got five sets of pajamas for I think one ninety nine. Five sets of pajamas for one ninety nine. People love Amila S. What have you got? What bargain? Everyone's everyone's had a bargain here. Amila S. I got a bargain that they were like closing the shop down, so they had things for really low, cheap, like a big, humongous teddy for five pounds. Yeah, brilliant. A closing down set. See, there's all these bargains had everywhere. What, what? You you have a, you get loads of bargains. You got the £100 magic cream for free. Oh, well, I got given that for work. I did get a bargain. I got given Charlotte Tilbury's a, a magic cream, which Annie tells me is £100. It is. It's exactly. But I got given it. For free. for free that's not a bargain though that's not i didn't no, buy free love but it's still a bargain who else that's Adassa. like a gift yeah that, adassa what's your bargain it was a 50p david williams book 50p for a david williams book so the thing is people love to get secondhand things because they love a bargain and if you've got something sitting around your house and you can transform it back into money by selling it to someone else, then that can be a great way to make money, especially over the summer and help your, help your parents as well. Let me just move this slide on. Oops, hang on a second. Wait, my computer's frozen a minute. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so now jumped two forwards. Oops, right, hang on a second guys, my computer's just frozen. Oops, am I still screen sharing? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going back to the slideshow. Let's see, we've got control over this computer again. Okay, so first of all, where are we going to find our stuff? Look around the room you are in right now and tell me what you can see that you don't think anybody wants or uses or that you don't need anymore. Who can see, can see something <laughs> that we can sell? Who can see something right in front of their eyes? Betsy, what can you see? I can see loads of teddy bears that I don't want anymore. Okay, loads of teddy bears you don't want anymore. Sophie, what can you see? Um, I found this like little birdhouse thing. Yeah, you don't want that anymore? 
No, okay. Someone will someone would probably love that. No, what can you see around the room that you don't want anymore? I see a bunch of pieces of paper. That's just like Annie, who's found a bit of plastic in our house. What can you see that someone else would want to buy? Um, uh, that we don't the need. case. That we don't that we don't need or want in this room or in the room around you, because all houses are full of all sorts of stuff that people don't want or need anymore. So even in the room you're in right now, you'll be able to find things. Holly, what can you see? Holly, just unmute yourself. Hi. To be fair, in, what I can see that I can sell is my anime figures because I don't need them anymore and it's like taking up space. Also, I'm Holly's friend, so hi. I love you, Leslie. You're so gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks, Holly's friend. Is Holly with you? Or you're just there with on Holly's login? We should on mute again. Okay, Adassa, what can you see around your room? This is um like a wooden picture on the wall and I don't need it. A wooden picture on the wall, you don't need it. Jessica, what's Jessica got? A book, inside out, inside my mind. There's things everywhere all around. And Annie's off looking for something that we don't need. Okay, so that's the first place you can find things is by decluttering your house, okay? That's the first place you can find things. We're gonna come on to what you've got to do to get admission. The next thing is to use platforms online like Vinted or eBay or Facebook to find things to sell. Now, Annabelle, this is what you've been doing, isn't it? Tell us what you've been doing then and how you've done it. So I'm not at school at the moment. So in my days, I drag my family around to loads of different charity shops or like discounted shops like TK Maxx because they get really good brands in. For yeah. Cheap. And what I do is I do spend a little bit of money on packaging because if you have good packaging, people give you good reviews because they're like, it's nicely packaged. And I want to have five out of five so more people reach my stuff. But What sort of things are you selling, Annabelle? And where are you selling them? On Vinted, I use, I sell like younger people's clothes. So like from places like the Mod Box and stuff. I think I've literally, got in part of a room in my house, I've put everything I'm selling. I go into that. I've got drawers full of things that I've got to sell. Like oh, I've Annabelle, put... this is so good. This is great. You can literally do this section for us. We're all going to learn from Annabelle about how to sell on Vinted. How do I turn it? I used to have a Squishmallow obsession. So now I've got a load of Squishmallows up on there. And some clothes I need to put up. Yeah. On it. And then in this drawer, I've got a load of clothes that are up on Vintage. And these are all things you're selling on Vintage? Yeah, and they're like Pretty Little Thing, Hollister, Bershka, Boohoo. Annabelle, and how much are you selling of these things? Like, how many listings have you got? And I've got some more over there. It's depending on how much they are. And then I've got these packaging and I wrap them up in tissue paper, so it's nice. Wow, but this is impressive. I sell them for depending on the price. So I can get, sometimes when I go to like car boot sales or charity shops, I get them for a pound. Yeah. And I really sell them for six pounds. But then like I, when I see there's lots of people viewing it, I slowly buy like 10p, I'll slowly drop it down until someone goes, I want that now. Because I do, I'll do, I'll put it on like a 50p, something like six pound 50 and then I'll go six pound 40, six pound this. What, and that's what people house? yeah that's brilliant uh, that's I, I have gushes of like things so all of a sudden okay, no one's buying anymore and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of people going oh I'm gonna buy and then I'm having to run around to lots of different shops to just go put them in the post box and the good thing about vintage you don't have to pay for the shipping they do which I quite like <laughs> Yeah, but on vintage, you have to sell secondhand stuff, don't you? So you can't sell the bracelets. You need to do no, what you're doing. No, you can sell stuff you've made as well. There are a lot of people selling handmade stuff. Really? Because some people are telling us they get banned from selling handmade stuff. You don't. I, I sold one of my crochet animals on there and I haven't got banned. And I've seen lots of people who have made bracelets and so on. And you can get quite a lot of money from it still in that way as well, because people can do it online. That is brilliant, Annabelle. Thanks for that's amazing and well done. I think that's really impressive. So next is quality checking, which I'm sure you have to do then, Annabelle. You have to make sure the items are in good condition, yeah? And give them nice packaging and not sell broken stuff. So you've always got to inspect what you're selling and clean and repair it if you can to increase its value. And then we just talked then about pricing strategy. 
And Annabelle's talked about how she changes the prices in order to increase demand. So lowering the price to get more people buying it. But the other way to check prices is to just go on Amazon or Vintage and just look at the thing you want to sell and find the price that other people are selling it at. And then, now we've already talked about Vintage. What other platforms are there? Or has anybody used any other platforms? Mm -hmm. Mila S, have you used any other platforms? Oh, where's she gone? Oh, she's there. No, her hand was up. Anyone else use any other platforms or can think of any? Annabelle, which other platforms can you recommend? I use Depop, but I don't recommend that one as much because you have to pay for the shipping. But I've done Depop, eBay, and I sell some of my old pet stuff on Preloved and Pets for Homes because they do accessories. Wow, you are very and Gumtree. Well, this is impressive. And Gumtree, Gumtree is one, yeah. Which, so basically your number one recommendation for a platform to sell on is what, Vinted? Yeah, because they don't take that, they have a 10p, that's 10p of like their buyer thing and that goes to them, but the whole profit goes to you because I've sold on eBay and they take 10% of your profit and it's quite annoying because I'm like, yeah. that's my money. Okay, Annabelle, we've got people on TikTok and Stella asking, what, what is your Vinted account? So we can all follow it. Let me get it up. It is just my name, I think. It's just, let me go on it. It's just Annabelle Hoey. Annabelle Hoey. So on TikTok. Just one word. And it's got a sunset profile. Okay. So vintage with a sunset profile. Annabelle, how old are you? 14. Okay. So if you want to follow a 14 year old entrepreneur, follow Annabelle Hoey, H O E Y, on vintage and look for a sunset profile. She's just shown us her collection of stuff that she's got on there. And it's particularly if there's going to be a lot of Squishmallows coming through. Is that right, Annabelle? Yeah. Okay, so all Squishmallow fans follow and look at, look at Annabelle Huey on Vinted. Okay, and another place you can sell this thing. We've talked there about selling online, but you could also do the same thing like car boot sales. Toby, as in sweets galore, Toby sells, he looks for fairs on Facebook Marketplace, so like village fair or garage sales. So again, if you live in a road where you've got a house with lots of people that go buy it, then setting up in front of your house can be a good idea if you live in that type of house. Okay, so before we go on to your plan, oh, and how do we spell Annabelle for Annabelle Huey? A-N-A-B-E-L space H-O-E-Y on Vinted. Annabelle, you might have an influx of people, you'll have to tell us. Okay, so the, before we go on to our plans for the summer, just a bit about how to manage a business. Number one, you've got to track your sales. You've got to make sure you know how much you're selling and how much money you're taking. And in fact, we didn't totally track the sales, did we, on your bracelet mm -hmm. store? Because it got so busy, we just took the money and didn't count the stock. Yeah. Which we should have done, shouldn't we? So, because we don't know how many bracelets we sold, <laughs> we just know how much money we took. Number two, you've got to then take away the cost of your goods. So your bracelet kit or your lemonade or your cake mixture, or if you've bought any items to sell on, the cost of those goods. And that's how you're going to work out your profit. And then number three, you're going to have to think it's not everything will go perfectly. We've heard lots of stories in the beginning about how things weren't perfect. So you've got to just note down what you can do differently who's had who's done something on a selling a stall where they've then improved it next time they've done it for those who've been out with bracelet stalls who can think of a way they improved things already after the first time did you um, oh i had package I, I had packaging yeah we had packaging um that was the main one. And the card reader. Oh, and the card reader. Packaging and the card reader. Noah, what have you done? What, how have you improved something before? When I was one time selling bracelets, yeah. what I started with was just like like normal ones with just colours. But then when you like add beads or you say we can make a customised one and then come back tomorrow and you can have it, it actually helps so much more. Oh, so you did that. You offered more solutions, more services. Great answer. Is there someone at the door? 
Can you quickly go in and see who it is? Sorry, I think our doorbell just rang. Okay, the next thing is safety and responsibilities, which is very important because you're all kids. Number one, you need to tell your parents what you're doing. Hopefully when you've done this or whoever looks after you, you need to tell them what you're doing because you will probably need their help with one thing or another, whether that's setting up the table or driving you to the place or whatever it is. So number one, tell your parents. Number two, don't send anything from your house without permission. Now, can I just tell you, when I was a kid, I sold something from my house without permission. And my mum realised and she made me go to the shop and buy it back. And I was in big trouble. Can you imagine how embarrassing that was? So definitely do not do what I did, okay? What Which is, do? I sold something from grandma's house without asking her. And then she realized, and I had to go to the shop and tell them what I'd done and buy it back. And I was about your age. It was really embarrassing, obviously. <laughs> so definitely don't do that. And then other summer holiday business ideas that kids can do or teens can do, which are very popular is car washing and dog walking. Okay, so I would like you all to get your pen and paper and now you don't have to do this, but if you were going to do a summer business, which one would you do and why? And do you think you're going to do it or not? And what do you need to prepare? So have a little think about your own plan for a summer business. Stelz. Do you know how old you have to be for dog walking? I don't know, to be honest. I think if someone will trust you with a dog... Do you remember that woman who came on the other week, Sarah, from my bank, and she said that you could earn money from 13, didn't she? So if someone will trust you with a dog, I think that's on them, but I would really not walk big dogs when you're little. Toby? Big dogs. Building on what Stella said, I think it's just as long as you have, like, parent permission to do it, then you should be allowed. Yeah. And realistically, for your age, the people who are going to let you walk their dogs are going to be people who know you and who know your families it's not going to be a stranger at your age so have a think and we're going to make a little pl a plan for your own summer business and you're going to share your plan in about three minutes and i want to know which business you're going to do and ah, here we are let me just move that out of the way there so choose your business model, which is a clay bead bracelet or selling. No, no, the question. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was going to log out. No, okay. Clay bead bracelet business or selling something you've made. A lemonade stand business or selling a food and drink, or a pre-loved business selling unwanted things from around your house. No, I think Annie was just asking him about babysitting. Now, again, I don't know about the laws around babysitting, actually, but that anyone who was doing babysitting at the age of 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that would be with someone you knew because it would have to be in order for them to let you babysit. OK, who's got their business, their summer business plan ready or that what they'd like to do who's got who's ready to share okay Stella and Valentina go ahead with your big summer business plan the big reveal what are we what are you going to be doing we were thinking to do baking and then get drinks because I feel like it'll be really good in summer to do drinks especially and then get cupcakes and stuff and I love I Valentina you've just tripled the business model there I love it you do it all this together Stella go ahead I have a bunch of books that I don't read, so I'll probably also sell some books. And where are you going to do this? Have you thought where you can do it? Maybe like a park or like the beach or something. Yeah. Oh, the beach. If you did it on the beach, you would be absolutely inundated with people. Yeah. Yeah. But you might get told you're not allowed to sell on the beach, but then you can probably get away with it for a little bit, like we did at the park, didn't we? Wait, no, the, a person came over, but then he just gave us advice. He gave us advice. that He said they support children, child entrepreneurs, and, how, and that we could sell at the park. So that was really good. Great idea. So you're doing pre-loved cakes and drinks on one business. 
Yeah. I want to hear the results of this because this is good. I like the way you bundled it all in on one. Great answer. Okay, who's next? Sophie, what's your plan? My idea is to do drinks and like different treats and then like also do loom bands. And if they get three things, then they can get like a free like loom band and then like take out like, three or four of my friends that live quite close to me. And then to save like the money if there's anything left because you might get like a lot of cups or plates but you might just randomly run out so Sophie that's a great idea but to do it with four friends the one thing we've learned from doing it with groups of friends is that four friends is a lot of friends to then divide the profit up with and actually Annie and her friends made more money out of less sales when they did it with two of them than when they did more money and had to split it between four so that's something to think about it can definitely help to have a group of friends because then you can all share the experience and look after each other and talk. But also you then have to divide the profit in four ways. Great answer, Sophie. I love that. You need to find a friend to do that with. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Uh, Annie, um, what's your plan? So I was obviously thinking clay beads because I already do clay beads. And but on the side, like next to it, we can have a different stand and they can also like... We have a deal of two bracelets for five pounds. It would normally be six pounds, but then five pounds. And if they use that deal, then maybe they can get like a free, like a small brownie bite. I don't know. Oh, so we're all combining food and made items. That's a really good idea, though, because we can increase our appeal by doing offering more of a variety of items. Yeah. Are you going to make the brownies? I don't know. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay, uh, no. I'm probably going to do probably drinks and maybe fudge because fudge is a really good sell and usually it's very expensive. So if I do it lower than the actual price, then I might get more sales. And in the if I do it in the summer, it's hot, so it will be a better sell and I'll need to do it somewhat busy. Fudge is a great idea now because fudge is one of those things that everybody loves as well. Can you make fudge? Yeah, I've done it. Oh, that's great. That's a really good idea. I bet you'll find people would love fudge. Okay, who's next? Annabelle. I have an idea that I wanted to like make flower like crochet pl plushes, but then sell my bracelets that have flowers. I made the little shaped flowers on them. I made those, did you? Yeah, I make them in lots of different colours. They stretch apart. They're literal. But I'm gonna, I wanted to make a flower plush to go with it and then this little pack. That as a set, I love that. So yeah. crocheted flower plushy and the brace, the handmade bracelet. Yeah. That's really good. That's really, they're really beautiful, Annabelle. Well done. Thank That's you. Great. Sophie. Jessica put, is putting things in the chat. Oh, Jessica's putting things in the chat. Thanks, guys. Let me come back to the chat. Jessica is doing a dolls business, making dolls onesies. Yes, Jessica, show us what you've made. Did you make, is that a Ted? Did you make that, Jessica, the whole thing? That's incredible. You guys are so talented. You could sell those. Is it for a doll to wear? And what's it made out of? Is it like, hold it up again, Jessica, so we can see it. Is it like a, it's a onesie for a doll? Jessica, they look beautiful. I seriously reckon you can sell those. Are you selling those already? Whereabouts? To put it in the chat on Vinted. Jessica, put your store name in the chat. We're all going to check it out and say it's everybody on TikTok. That's amazing. Annie. So you could also do for like an outside, for an outside summer thing. But at, at, at our school, we have a thing called the Tenor Challenge, which all year sixes do. And... It's like the end of the year, sort of everyone with their friends set up a store and all the other years come and buy stuff. Um, anyway, me and my friends are thinking, so there's these cones which you fill with like candy or popcorn and sweets and stuff. And then we, we put like a bracelet over that. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you're combining exactly. sweets and the cone. Yeah. That's a good idea. So sweets. We know Toby, who's not here today, has done brilliantly selling sweets. He's made over £1,500 selling sweets. So sweets is a great thing to sell. And you're talking about putting sweets in a cone with bracelets on them. No, oh. it's like 
a cone like this, like in a sec. So it'd be bigger and it'd be made out of plastic. It's like a sort of cone shape. Yeah. And then you it comes with these things and you tie it at the top. And in it, you put sweets, popcorn, and then you get like a bracelet. And then like, here's the cone. And you get a bracelet. Yeah. And go, oh, my bracelets are tangled. <laughs> you, but you, you put the bracelet, bracelet around the and cone. Then, and if this was a bracelet, you put it like, and then it'd just be like that. So guys, you're really coming up with some extra creativity to what we were selling, which is just bracelets. And that's a brilliant idea as well. We're getting Jessica's website for her. Who else has got their summer idea to share? Betsy, what's yours? My idea was to do a cake business as well, because where I live, there's no shops in the village. And there's lots of like elderly people who do loads of dog walks a day. So I think oh, that would get a lot of customers. Yeah, that would be a great... When well, Where's the most busy place in that village, Betsy? Where do they all walk? Probably, like, in the main part as you're just walking into the village. Yeah, so you need to get there with your cake stand. That sounds like a great idea. Adassa, what's your summer idea? Like, sell lemonade around the estate. Sell lemonade around... Is, is, is your estate busy, Adassa? <laughs> yes. I think you're going to be in with a winner on there then because people will love that. It's a lots of people walking around and driving around. And um, there's a lot of people driving. Brilliant. That's that sounds like a good plan. Who else has still got their hand up? Estelle's you still got your hand up? In year six, we done this thing called five pound grow. And it was basically where we like got to like pick things. Like it would be like you could pick ice creams or do a game. And everyone in the school had to bring in five pound. Um, and then we had a five pound budget to be basically, if we got given five pounds in our group, like for each person, and then we had to make a profit from that. And we spent the money on like the things that we wanted to do it for. And like you could, do, people were like selling bracelets, some people made like fruit stickers and, and we did an ice cream and how much money did we make we made like a hundred pound five pounds yeah and we got to and then we gave it all to the school and then they basic everyone that made their money and then they like put it towards the school yeah that's a great idea that's like annie's tenor challenge thing they do at your school isn't it you've just got a bigger budget right mila s what's your summer idea mila s is your hand up my idea is like doing a cake stall and you buy two cakes and then you get one bracelet for free Oh, great. I love that. Buy two cakes, get one bracelet for free. You could do buy two cakes, get one bracelet for half price because you're still going to have to make those bracelets. So you want to get some money for them. But that's a great idea. I love it. Jessica's web Jessica's websites can be found. So it's Design a Friend where Jessica's selling her dolls clothes. Jessica, what do we need to search up on this Design a Friend website? Noah, have you found it? No, I found the website, but it doesn't come up with the stuff. Okay, we need to, Jessica, put in the chat how we find the actual stuff because that looked brilliant and everyone wants to look at it. Okay, anyone else? Has everyone shared their summer idea? I think they haven't, they? Okay, that's it. For, so, guys, great summer ideas. If you do these over the summer, then when Biz Kids is back after the summer holidays, by the way, it's not the end of the term now, but you need to plan. We want to hear all your stories of the success that you've had because you. it sounds like you've got some brilliant ideas there and you've all really thought about ways to improve the business by adding in more things like combining drinks with bracelets cakes with drinks all sorts of things so that's really good now next week we have a before we come on to just anything people want to update us on next week we have a really special guest who's a woman who's created a brand called child's farm who knows that brand because many of you may have used it when you were younger and she's going to tell us how she made 35 million pounds OK, so she's going to come on and share her story of how she made 35 million pounds 
from the from creating the brand Child Farm, which is loved by families all over the country. 